to have a little sleep tonight and to cuddle and relax on the ground. <laughs> so we've got all the blankets. We've got all the pillows. We've got candles, tea, oils. I've got a special little box that's called a hug in a box. It's just for you to try. We're going to help you Okay, so don't you worry. I know that it's hard sometimes to fall asleep. But I've got you covered today, okay? Pinky promise. I've got you covered. You'll be sleeping in no time, okay? <laughs> so just relax. Mm. Okay. Let's just make sure that this is all done. gonna have some too. So don't worry. Okay. I have this. It's just like a normal little glass teapot with um, boiled water. But we're gonna add to it, okay? So, I love, I think I may have told you this before, I like chamomile blossoms as well as lavender and I mix them together and I make my own sleep tea. So I'm going to make you your own sleep tea, okay? So, do a few skips.
Sanders wonders with distinct taste in the great aroma has been used for centuries to cure ailments and mortal often used for centuries. Tea helps to one skip of that. over to the 
look at the hedgehog first of all before I did all that and I guess he was still breathing so I was like okay so that's when I got all those things out um because I was like I can't just leave this hedgehog I don't know if my dog's injured it I don't know you know I could see a little bit of blood on it I didn't know if it was from my dog like with the spikes or it was from the hedgehog so um I managed to pick up the hedgehog with my gardening gloves and I took it inside and I put it in a little cardboard box. I mean, it was about like this size. It was like a big, it was a big cardboard box. Lots of space. And one side had obviously all the ripped up newspaper for its bed. And it had water and there was apples. And uh, hedgehogs also will eat meat. They'll eat like dog food and stuff. So I got a little bit of like dog food as well. And just gave it some options. And tried to leave it to see if it would come out. And see if it would eat anything. And then I went past and it was still in its ball, it hadn't moved. So I was searching all these videos online of how do you, how do you coax a hedgehog out of this ball? Um, and I read that you can like lift them and you need to try and work out which, where is this underside and where is this overside? And on the top of it, you can gently stroke along the spines in a certain direction and it relaxes the hedgehog so I got towels, I put them down on my dining room table um, sorry, my kitchen table and I set the hedgehog on and then I gently started stroking it and I kept doing this and eventually the hedgehog unraveled he was really shy though, he didn't want to look at me he was still really scared but I put him down on the Because he had two paws, two feet. Um, he looked okay. There was just like a little bit of blood left on the towel. So I still couldn't work out if it was from him or it was from the dog. But because I wasn't sure, I was like, I'm going to keep him overnight, nice and warm, in the cardboard box in the utility room. Where he's got water, he's got food, he's got a bed, and he can just rest. release him if he's okay. So, um, yeah, so sure enough, I, um, left him in overnight. As I said, it was a large cardboard box, and it had his bed and stuff. And I went in in the morning, and I was like, this is interesting. My gardening gloves were on the floor. Um, I put, like, a little tiny hot water bottle beside the box to, for heat, um, because they like it to be warm. Uh, that was on the ground. There was other bits and bobs, like a cup had been knocked over. It was just like a little bit of chaos. And I looked in the box and the hedgehog was not there. And I was like, what is going on? And then I looked in the sink and the hedgehog was in the sink. The hedgehog had obviously decided he was quite happy. There was no problem with the hedgehog. And he decided in the middle of the night he was going to get up and he was going to go for an explorer and he got himself stuck in the sink. Um, so he was okay, so I put him back in his box. And he was quite happy, he was like moving, he made a wee bed for himself. And I didn't want to release him during the day just because hedgehogs are nocturnal. So I waited until that evening. And then I went to a nearby woods because I didn't want to release him in the garden because the dogs would get him again. So went to a nearby woods and I released him there and I left all this food um, and things from there because I didn't know how far we'd taken him from his, his nest so I tried to make him a new one um, but yeah that was Henry the Hedgehog so he was, there was no problems with Henry the Hedgehog he had his food, I'm pretty sure it was my dog's blood that must have been on him but anyway I wanted to tell you that story now our tea is ready so
how is that close call? Okay, here's your tea. I'm gonna put this over here. There's nothing better than chamomile and lavender tea. I promise. It's so good. Tea and delicious. Okay, let me just put that there. <laughs> so yeah, so I was saying how we drink
lemon and orange extract. It's for whole body. It's a nice little oil. Bring this up. Mm. Okay. And we have something else. I have yes, I'm told. Geranium, lemongrass, sandalwood, peppermint, and sweet orange. So these are like a really nice set of them, and I feel like we can make a much better blend by using this. So I'll go through some options that we can do one of their own ones and see what you think. So. I 
much they're going to put it in this so that we can pour it into our hand. So we just want two of these. Then we want And then we will do the caramel. And we'll do two caramel. This also got a little blocker on it as well. Mm, I'm not sure how you've done this. This is not going well today. Let's back to the side. Oh, there we go. I didn't have to use the spoon. I'm ready to mix it. Oh my goodness. Smell that. It smells amazing. Okay. I'm gently just going to start massaging her face. No contact with them. Do your level. Okay, here we are. Your face. And also, and do your scalp. Wow, just get that all everywhere. Do you want some of your tea? Okay. So you just relax and just let me do
are now going to make you super tucked in and we're going to read you a little bedtime story, okay? So you just need to close your eyes for me. Alright, let's have a look. What can we pick for you? Ear tips tingle in a blush of abject shame. 
He had never been able to bring himself even to the mild exposure of open work socks in the presence of the fair sex. And yet the lady in this case was to all appearances simply and securely asleep. The mouse, on the other hand, seemed to be trying to crowd a wonder jar into a few strenuous minutes. If there is any truth in the theory of transmigration, this particular mouse must certainly have been in a former state of the member of the Alpine Club. Sometimes, in its eagerness, it lost its footing and slipped for half an inch or so, and then in fright or more probably temperate bit. Theodoric was goaded into the most audacious undertaking of his life, crimsoning to the hue of a beetroot and keeping an agonised watch on his slumbering fellow traveller. He swiftly and noiselessly secured the ends of the railway rugs to the racks on either side of the carriage, so that a substantial curtain hung up he had thus improvised, he proceeded with violent haste to extricate himself partially and the mouse entirely from the surrounding casings of tweed and half wool. As the unraveled mouse gave a wild leap to the floor, the rug slipping its fastening at either end also came down with a heart curdling flop, and almost simultaneously the awakened sleeper opened her eyes. With a movement almost quicker than the mouse's, Theodoric pounced on the and hold his ample folds chin high over his dismantled person as he collapsed into the farther corner of the carriage. The blood raced and beat in the veins of his neck and forehead while he waited dumbly for the communication cord to be pulled. The lady, however, contented herself with a silent stare at her strangely muffled companion. How much has she seen? Theodore queried to himself. And in any case, what on earth must she think of his present posture? I think I've got a chill, he ventured desperately. Really, I'm sorry, she replied. I was just going to ask you if you would open this window. I fancy it's malaria, he added, his teeth chattering slightly, as much from fright as from a desire to support his theory. I've got some brandy in my old doll, if you'll kindly reach it down for me, said his companion. Not for what else, I mean, I never take anything for it, he assured her. I suppose you caught it in the tropics. Theodoric, whose acquaintance with the tropics was limited to an annual present of a chest of tea from an uncle in Ceylon, felt that even the malaria was slipping from him. Would it be possible, he wondered, to disclose the real state of affairs to her in small installments? Are you afraid of mice? He ventured, growing, if possible, more scarlet in the face. Not unless they come in quantities, why do you ask? I had one crawling inside my clothes just now, said Theodoric, in a voice that hardly seemed his own. It was a most awkward situation. It must have been if you wear your clothes all t- at all tight, she observed, but mice have strange ideas of comfort. I had to get rid of it while you were asleep, he continued. Then with a gulp he added, it was getting rid of it that brought me to to this. Surely leaving off one small mice wouldn't bring on a chill, she exclaimed, with a levity that Theodoric accounted a domino. Evidently, she detected something of his predicament and was enjoying his confusion. All the blood in his body seemed to have immobilised in one concentrated blush, and an agony of abasement, worse than a myriad mice, crept up and down over his soul. And then, as reflection began to assert itself, sheer terror took up the place of humiliation. With every minute that passed, the train was rushing nearer to the crowded and bustling terminus, where dozens of prying eyes would be exchanged for the one paralysing pair that watched him from the farther corner of the carriage. There was one slender, despairing chance, which the next few minutes must decide. His fellow traveller might relapse into a blessed slumber, but as the minutes dropped by, that chance ebbed away. The furtive glance which Theodore stole at her from time to time disclosed only an unthinking. I think we must be getting near now, she presently observed. Theodore had already noted, with growing terror, the recurring stacks of small, ugly dwellings that heralded the journey's end. The words acted as a single signal. Like a hunted beast breaking cover and dashing madly towards some other haven of monetary safety, he threw aside his rug and struggled frantically into his disheveled garments. He was conscious of dull suburban stations racing past the window, of a choking hammering sensation.
sensation in his throat and heart, and of an icy silence in the corner which he dared not lick. Then he sank back in his seat, clothed and almost delirious. The train slipped down to a final crawl, and the woman spoke. Would you be so kind, she asked, as to get me a porter to put me in a cab? It's a shame to trouble you when you're feeling unwell, but being blind makes one so helpless at a railway station. 